Hi, I'm Andy Daniel, Consulting Architect with Pernix Data, and I'm here to talk a little bit about Pernix Data FVP with virtual desktops. So let's first talk about the I.O. patterns of virtual desktops. Virtual desktops are very different from servers because they tend to be very write heavy. So typically this is something like 80% write, 20% read. Not only that, but they actually are very random in nature as well. They actually are very variable as we talk about different things that happen throughout the day. So as you can imagine, there may be a steady state with virtual desktops and then lots of people actually come into the office and this actually is known as both a boot storm and a login storm. These actions actually really bursty and take a toll on the underlying storage array. So when we're actually designing for virtual desktops, typically what will happen in an existing virtual environment is that we'll actually add uh, an additional storage array, but what if I told you we didn't have to do that? We could continue to use our existing storage array instead. So let's first draw in the rest of our infrastructure. So let's start with some ESXi hosts. So we have our desktops and our VMs. Now I specifically drew desktops and VMs here because not only are we going to run our desktops on our hosts, but we're actually going to run our VDI infrastructure as well. And I realize this is a little bit different from traditional architecture, but with Pernix Data FVP, we'll be able to do both. And that's, a, again, another added benefit of using FVP. So let's actually draw in um, the rest of our resources, starting with the server side resources. In this case, let's talk about using RAM and Flash. And finally, let's draw in FVP. Now you're going to notice here that I've actually drawn it at the host layer because it's actually installed in the host. And I'm going to draw performance. Because now no longer are we talking about having to provide the I.O. performance from the storage array, we're actually going to do it at the host side instead. The beauty of actually doing this is that now we're actually going to see host side latency rather than the latency of the actual storage. As this desktop VM actually loads up and actually writes a bit of data, it's actually going to have to come all the way down to the storage array in a traditional architecture, right? And actually come all the way back. So that's where we actually see this storage level latency, right? In this case, however, we're going to actually intercept the write, right? We're going to come here and then we're going to immediately acknowledge it back. Now, I drew up the case of an immediate acknowledgement from just one host because for things like, for example, non-persistent desktops, where we have a base image, right? If we were to actually lose this host in this case, then what will actually happen is we'll redirect to another host so we don't have to protect the data at this layer. Now, the beauty though with FVP is that if we did actually have full clone desktops as well, fully persistent, then we can actually come in and as this writes, we can actually replicate across the network to another host. Now we're still seeing local host level latency Right? We're actually protecting the data as well. Now, one final thing I want to talk about, though, is what we can do in the case of non-persistent desktops, because it's very important, right? We can actually optimize FVP for link clone technology. And so as this base image is actually loaded in, right, we'll actually load all of this data into the FVP layer. Now, as each additional virtual machine is provisioned, we don't actually have to go out and reload the base image. It's already there. So as VMs are, are continue to be provisioned out with each of these link clones, then this data is already here and we're only now adding a small amount, maybe a gigabyte per desktop to this actual layer and it allows for efficient use. And this is particularly important when we're talking about using maybe not flash, but maybe using existing RAM that's actually in the environment rather than flash in this case. So that's you know, a quick primer on actually virtual desktops with FVP. Um, again, uh, the benefits being the fact that now we're going to see server-side latency. We're going to continue to be able to scale out hosts and run additional desktops each time. And we're only provisioning the storage actually for capacity rather than performance. We're going to handle performance actually in the FVP layer. So again, that's desktops with FVP. And for more information, check us out at pernixdata.com.